Welcome back, Tan fans and Father Robert Nixon, on our last episode to uh, in this little mini series on the great spiritual master Thomas Akempis. This has been quite a journey for me. I've had just a great time. So today, we're going to just recap a handful of things, a little bit of his biography, touch on some of the the great works. I'm going to ask you some some other questions about some of your favorite works of his and what we can you know, take take from this great man, this great master, not just great author, but great spiritual holy man, um, and how we can apply that in our life today. But let's begin as we always do, Father, with a quick prayer. Yes, Connor. Almighty God, we implore your grace and your wisdom through the intercession of the Venerable Thomas Akempis. May our hearts remain faithful to your commands. May we walk your straight and narrow path, which leads us to the kingdom of eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Well, let's just um, let's just begin like this. What are we're talking about the man, not just the author, you know, the man himself. What are the virtues or charisms do you think that Thomas Akempis has to teach us today? You know, what when we look at his life, not just his writings, yes. his life, what should we try to emulate? He exemplifies uh, the the quiet achiever. He was someone who was this a tremendous author who was highly respected as a spiritual counselor and preacher. Yet he always chose to remain in the background as much as he possibly could. He was offered leadership of his community. Um, he was offered various professorships at academies and so forth. But no, he was committed to living the quiet life to which he committed, uh, to which he had bound himself by vows. And within this life, he exemplified fantastic humility. So here is one of the the greatest authors of the time, one of the most recognized spiritual authorities, but he prefers to go about the quite daily domestic tasks with the minimum of fuss, to keep himself in the background. And he even preferred for his works, such as The Imitation of Christ, to be published anonymously. Mm. So I think this is, is something we can learn from. Uh, so many people in this world are pushing themselves forward and trying to make the most of what they do. Rather, he was happy to do the work for the love of God, for the service of his fellow men, and then to step back from it. Oh, that's beautiful. And yeah, I think um, the pride and vanity of this world with the, our social media and our ability to get instant feedback on everything we say and do, and everyone is now with you know their smartphones um, and have constant communication with people, I think it feeds... Yeah. That vanity. And so a Kempis is a great role model for humility. I mean, the guy, you know, yeah, he lived in a different time period, but but pride and arrogance and ego and vanity were as much alive then as it is today. It just manifests maybe in a different way today. Uh, very much so. And, and he was really uh, recognized that he found his greatest peace and joy in this life in silence and in solitude. I think this is a powerful lesson which we could learn from a lot today because, as you say, we're assailed by, by constant information, by distractions, by streams of entertainment. And to step back from this, you know, to, to think, well, I'm going to take, take a day or even to take a morning or an afternoon of, of quietness and solitude. Um, it's a, such a wonderful thing. And, and we can learn from this. This is a lesson of monastic and religious life in general. But Thomas Akempis particularly exemplifies that. Um, his fidelity, I think, also is something. So he was uh, committed to religious life for, um, for about 70 years. Hmm. He lived this enclosed life, this very regular life. And there's a saying attributed to St. Gregory the Great, RJ quod agis, do what you do. In other words, Stick with what your with what your duties are. Don't look for changes, for promotions, for movement all the time, but be content with the uh, lot which God gives you, because it's a grace from God, and you know we can find our happiness within that, uh, as long as we're properly disposed. It reminds me of another great Tan classic that we have: the abandonment to divine providence by Jean Pierre de Cassade. Yeah, a wonderful and, work. Yeah, and he talks about. 
fulfilling the duties of your station in life. Um, that's what, how my dad always defined success as one who fulfills the duties of their station in life. Yeah. And the accompanying uh, theological point of that, which a Kempis, as you're talking about, a Kempis as a man, as a holy man, it reminds me of the sacrament of the present moment. And I would encourage our, our listeners, all those tan fans out there, busy moms with lots of little kids, uh, busy dads, you know, going to work or working mothers trying to manage yeah, both, yeah. wherever, whatever their station in life is. You know, the purpose of this whole series of podcasts, Father, is, is for our customers to find new spiritual directors and certain saints. And so I would encourage our listeners to invoke the intercession of Thomas Akempis, who's often deemed to be blessed or venerable. And ask his intercession to help them find stillness and quiet in their yeah. life. You know, yeah. because in the busy world, I think we actually, it's its one thing to say, turn off your cell phone. But I, I think we actually have yeah. to ask saints it, to help it, us indeed, do that indeed, and indeed. to help, you know, ask the intercession of Thomas Akempis to help you find silence yeah. and solitude it, in your right. busy life. And, and one of the things in, a, in another work by him, which will be, uh, which will be out in a little while, Silence and solitude. He talks about in the midst of the busyness of the world, constructing within our hearts this little ark, this this refuge of solitude, hmm. to which we can uh, revert in times of need. And this is so important because people in different states of of life, whether they're a busy mother, whether they're a businessman, whether they're doctor or lawyer, or whether they're a a, a priest or religious, you know, we all need this place of refuge and to realize. That where we're called, whatever station of life we find ourselves in, is precisely what God wants us to be doing at the present moment. Yeah. This full commitment, and, and this is something which He exemplified so well. Yeah. You know, wasn't focused on the past, wasn't focused on the future, but on fulfilling what it was God was asking Him to do at any moment of time. And of course, God never asks us to do anything which is beyond our capacity. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. All right, so. You know, what, uh, what's, well, you know what, when we were, just before we started recording, you mentioned another uh, work of a campus that we hadn't talked about before. And I think it's just worth mentioning. It's uh, St. Lidwina of Shidem. Did I get that yeah, right? Tell, yeah, tell yeah, us yeah. about that because okay. anytime, a, anytime a saint writes about a saint, I, yeah. I kind of find it fascinating. So so this was a saint who uh whom Thomas Akempis actually attended while she was on her deathbed. Mm. And she related to him all of her visions of, of hell and purgatory and heaven. And she's quite remarkable in a number of ways. Her sickness began after she, um, after she had an ice skating accident. So wow. I didn't realize ice skating was a thing a back, thing back then. A thing back then, me neither. No, obviously yeah. it was. Yeah. And she's also regarded as being the first – um, recorded victim of of multiple sclerosis. Wow. Yeah. Um, so it's a it's a tremendous work, and um, unfortunately, or surprisingly, not as well known as it deserves to be. We uh, Tan does publish a book uh, on her Saint Lid Lidwina, if I'm saying it right, of Shidem. Yeah. Now it's a, it's a name which has got innumerable variants. Mm. Uh, Kind of, yeah. Well, we do publish it. It's not a Kempis's translation, but if anybody's interested in, you know, in this this saint that a Kempis knew personally, you know, yeah. that's a fascinating thing to me. So I'm gonna check this out. But yeah, we should probably talk about publishing her biography by a Kempis. That would be a very special thing. So I just thought that was neat to to mention. That's another interesting point of his life that yeah. he sat at someone else's deathbed who became a saint. Oh, you yeah. know, I mean that's yeah. a, a beautiful thing. Now let me ask you this: um, Of all his works, and you've you've read many of them, and you've translated quite a few. What's your favorite? Well, uh, I really love the meditations on death, and um, one of the things in the rule of Saint Benedict is the counsel that we should keep death always before our eyes. Mm -hmm. And this is a book which puts it into practice um, in, in such a powerful and moving way. So it's it's a short book, but it's I would say it's a life changing book. Our you know, episode once, on that we could have talked hours about that. You know? Indeed, indeed. Yeah. yeah. So to, um, now, if this was, I, I totally understand how that's your favorite because I think now the ones I've read it's it's also my favorite because that 
that man who he fictionally creates is dying on his deathbed and thinking about how he's wasted his life. It's, it's just powerful. So I can only imagine having translated that, you know, would have been a very enjoyable thing, but also in, in perhaps intimidating thing as well because of the oh, reality yeah. of the subject. Oh yes, indeed. But what, you know, is that where you would tell people to begin? I mean, you know, perhaps, but I mean, yeah. if you were, if you were telling uh, well, people of, how of, to begin of, with a of, campus. Of course, you know. I would really advise, uh, he's most famous for the imitation of Christ, which is um, an immortal classic of Christian literature. So I would encourage everyone to read that if you haven't read it already. Mm -hmm. If you have read it already, it's certainly worth revisiting. Yeah. And um, yes, yeah, a wonderful work. So, what do you think? Uh, what do you think his future is in the church? You know, um, if we're in twenty twenty two, in three thousand twenty two, if people are still on the earth, we know that the church will be here. You think we'll still be reading a campus, or do you think he'll be put up on the on the bookshelf and be forgotten? <laughs> well. Um, you know, I think within the past um, couple of decades, there's been an increase in interest in him. And um, a while ago, I put on a retreat at our monastery on the imitation of Christ. And, mm. and some people had said, you know, uh, is anyone still interested in this book anymore? You know, it was a classic when we, we this is older people. And um, and it was booked out straight away. It was uh, tremendous to see the, the interest in it, uh, not only uh, from people of all ages, a lot of very young people. So I think... Thomas Akepis actually is very appealing to the contemporary reader. Um, he His wisdom is timeless. It's not fixed to any particular situation or whatever. He speaks straight to the human heart, the human condition. So I, I'm pretty confident that um, assuming the final judgment hasn't come by <laughs> um, by 3020, which I yeah. wouldn't rule out altogether. Yeah, me you know, um, Assuming that... Uh, the world and the church, therefore, is still in existence. I, I believe that the writings of Thomas Akempis will still be read. Well, I hope that uh, you and I one day, uh, with our glorified bodies, get to sit up there and have a nice conversation with Akempis in heaven and say, hey, thanks for writing all those things, because that gave you something to translate and me something to publish. <laughs> so Thank you, Connor. that would be a great, that would be a great uh, luncheon with uh, the great Thomas Akempis one day. So if we see him up there, we'll have to, we'll have to make sure we corner him and say, Hey, sit down and have a drink with us. How about it sounds, that? sounds incredible. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, thank you for this series on uh, Thomas Akempis father. You've been, you've been masterful in your own explanation of all of this. I've learned a ton and I'm sure our, our listeners and our customers at TAN are going to be uh, very edified by everything you've had to say. So we'll pray for you and you pray for us and we'll, we'll uh, together seek the intercession of uh, Thomas Akempis. Thank you, Connor. God, God bless. bless you. God bless, Father. Thank you. Thank you.